Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad you're with us to stay curious on this episode. Coming to you live from the American Space Museum in beautiful downtown Titusville, just nine miles away from Kennedy Space Center and the rocket pads out there that we love calling the Rocket Ranch. And one of the gentlemen that worked on that Rocket Ranch, Marty Winkle, my co-producer and friend through this program. Marty, how you doing? Doing good, Mark. Assuming you're doing good also. Well, doing good. Hope you're sounding good on the UCAC microphone that brings your voice to stay curious. We had an interesting day today, didn't we? Why don't you tell them which astronaut we visited today, Marty? We went to see Wendy Lawrence. Too short, Wendy yeah. Lawrence, right? Yeah. <laughs> STS, I think, was 86. It's too short. Yes, and uh, she, uh, uh, quite a quite a gal, uh, four shuttle flights. We're going to show you a couple pictures of that here in just a minute of our trip out there. We wanted to let everybody know today's program, we're going to talk about one of the fathers of the spacesuit, Mr. Bill Elkins, passed away late October. His son, Steve, informed me about this because Steve and Bill had been in our museum visiting uh, with uh, Gary Harris, who is another suit maker that Bill, who you're going to get to know here, um, uh, Gary Harris uh, was mentored by this Bill Elkins and uh, passed away in his 90s. And we wanted to do a little tribute to him uh, an appropriate time and this appropriate times today we've got two spacewalks in space history going on this time so stick around a little bit for stay curious as we honor one of the true pioneers of the american space age mr bill elkins well marty we enjoy always going out and seeing the astronaut of the day and you come to kennedy space center Make sure you do catch the astronaut that uh, is going to give a talk at 11 o'clock and then 3.15 every day. Uh, we have Mr. Nick Thomas. We call him the Astronaut Wrangler. Nick has joined our Stay Curious team and uh, gives a program most Mondays. Uh, uh, but definitely uh, we enjoy Nick Thomas and all your stories and uh He'll be on Monday. Uh, this uh, while we're talking about Nick, we're working up Apollo 17 and Gene Cernan stories straight from uh, Nick Thomas, who, like I said, he's the astronaut wrangler at Kennedy Center, Kennedy Visitor Center, and uh, just a great guy. And we are blessed that he has joined in getting behind our Stay Curious program. So beautiful day out there, Marty. They got the holiday decorations out there. There's where you take your bus tour. Like I tell everybody, once you go through that ticket gate at 9 o'clock, go get on the bus right away to the Saturn V Center before it get, they get the line gets too long. And then you can come back anytime you want and enjoy Discovery and the new uh, the shuttle, uh, Atlantis, I mean, and uh, the new Gateway and, of course, the Astronaut Hall of Fame. And the Rocket Garden and a lot out there. But we saw Wendy Lawrence today. There she is on the far left. And Nick Thomas is right there above my head talking about uh, one of the, that was uh, 114. Wendy had a very interesting career. She Her first flight was um, Astro 2, an astronomy uh, uh, lab. There she is uh, going to sign autographs there. It's quite cool how they have it up there in the lights for them. Uh, there's Nick with Wendy. She wore a mask during the signing, and he, frankly, Marty, I probably would too. All these foreign people coming out there to the visitors complex. You never know what you can catch. Um, but what a delightful lady. Like I said, Astro One. Here's a picture of uh, her signing some stuff for Marty and Nick talking to Marty there. She was on Astro Two, then two trips to the Mir Space Station. And then she was on the return to flight 114 with Commander Eileen Collins and crew uh, after the Columbia accident. So, boy, Marty, those were four very interesting flights. I would have loved to have had those flights. And I asked her about the Mir space station compared to the ISS. She said it was the Mir was smaller and just crammed with stuff. And when we did autographs, I asked her... Um, when she went for the second time to Mir two years later, was there something up there that she thought, oh, my God, they still have this here? And she said everything. The Russians did not get rid of anything 
they didn't they hardly threw anything away in their cargo ships uh they kept uh, old computers and everything just thinking they might use them sometimes so marty a delightful lady we went up there with our with uh, anita truex there on the right our very important office manager and handles our merchandise there what have you got to say about what you learned from wendy lawrence marty well she didn't answer the one question i asked her <laughs> yeah, she said come back at 3.15 because yeah, she does a completely do. different talk about the yeah. Mir space station. Yeah, you asked the, her the what? Yeah, one of the story behind it, STS-86, she got kind of a nickname too short. And I think I know the story, but uh, I wanted to hear it from her. But she said, come back, like Mark said, come back at 3.15. Uh, uh, Weatherford was her commander on that. He's quite tall. He could have been the too tall on there. But, uh, yep, very, very interesting lady. They are all very interesting. They all put a different spin on it. Uh, she particularly talked about the uh, uh, repairing the, the tile, uh, if they had to, the training for that and and, their, um, and uh, so forth. So, uh, Wendy Lawrence, thank you for all that you do to inspire the next generation of, of space uh, workers out there. Well, Marty, this is a date in history, December 1st. How about that? And I know Marty pretty good. I'll bet you've got most of your Christmas shopping done. Have you, my friend? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I do. Y you do? Yeah. yeah. One or two more to go. That's it. All right. Well, he's smiling there. I'll tell you what. You get a gift from Marty Winkle. You, you're a special person, and he really puts some thought into it. And and uh, it's been great to know you. This will be like our fourth Christmas that we've known each other. Well, STS-97 Endeavor was launched on December 1st, 2000. This was the last human space flight of the 20th century. Launched at 11.06 p.m. The astronauts involved there on their, their patch, uh, Commander Brent Jett on his third space flight, Pilot Michael Bloomfield on his second, Mission Specialist Joe Tanner on his third, uh, Mark Garno of Canada on his third and last flight, and Carlos Noriega on his second last flight. This was the 15th flight of Endeavor, Marty. The, uh, the uh, OV-105 that replaced Challenger. And it was the 101st flight of the entire shuttle program. Though it's STS-97. Those numbers got lost in translation of order uh, 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 lots of times as payloads or the orbiter itself had to be put back there. There's our friends there. Let's go. The beautiful launch, that's a picture you see a lot of Endeavor uh, blasting off launch pad 39B, the uh, Artemis launch pad. And there it is in space with a whole bunch of goodies inside of it, including the Unity module. Uh, I mean, they put a double wing solar panel on Unity. And um, uh, they had, uh, uh, they brought uh, the power supply basically one of the first wings uh wings one of the first and uh solar panels up there was taken up there by this flight 97 and uh there is astronaut noriega i think doing a spacewalk uh, with that uh, panel overhead there that put power into the unity module of the international space station 22 years ago all right and this was just at the beginning of the occupancy of our wonderful International Space Station. And that spacesuit there, and, and everything involved with it, uh, uh, here is the father of the spacesuit, Bill Elkins, with his son Steve there. Hello, Steve. Uh, this was a visit here to our space museum, I think, three years ago. And not only did Bill Elkins pioneer spacesuits with Litton Industries, was one of the pioneering companies, but he also took this application of the headgear, the uh, uh, cooling systems, and so forth, and he created a medical company that created a what was called a cool head for multiple sclerosis. And some of you in sports may know the game ready headgear uh, in there and uh, to for concussions. So this gentleman was very involved, uh, not just in space, but transitioning the spacesuit technology into the uh, 
medical industry. Things like you send a, a premature baby home with a heart monitor and they can monitor respiratory and heart and everything from its crib in your home at the hospital 20 miles away or more. This gentleman had something to do with that. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about his life here. Um, let me get that out of the way there. He was born in Chicago, Illinois, and lived much of his life in California. Father of three. He was with uh, his, his wife. Uh, he met, uh, Steve uh, sent me this. Thank you, Steve. Uh, his wife, Shirley Elaine Schoen, 68 years they were married. They met on a blind date when he was in the Air Force, and they were engaged two weeks later and married three months after their first date. Whew! I've heard of those stories, Marty, but then sticking together 68 years, that is truly love at first sight. Uh, and Steve has a sister, Catherine and, and Linda. Uh, and uh, uh, he says here that his father um, inventions included a variety of space, medical and sports equipment, all which were worn by humans. One of the inventions he was most proud of was a space suit with full mobility which was selected for a series of Apollo missions in a five-way competition with uh, aerospace industries. And I remember talking to Bill about this, that, that there was uh, all these companies competing for the Apollo spacesuit. The Mercury and Gemini spacesuits were basically adapted from the high-altitude uh, test flight type of spacesuits that were needed to keep the uh, 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 pilots in a correct environment. Um, so let's look at a couple pictures here. This spacesuit was unveiled about three years ago as the Artemis spacesuit. And uh, here is the evolution of all the spacesuits through history. And you start up there at the upper left-hand corner. And we're going to, uh, oh, I didn't put the diving bell. It actually started with a diving bell of a gentleman named Wiley Post. Uh, he took a, uh, a submersible diving bell type suit and adapted it uh, to an aircraft. And uh, Bill Elkins had something to do with that. There is Bill. Like I said, it's delightful to talk to him uh, a couple years ago with his son. Uh, Steve is an Ames NASA employee. And uh, there is a picture that Bill supplied us. And this is out at the Kennedy Center Visitors Complex. Uh, I know most of you watching today have been out there and uh, seen this display. There's actually two other spacesuits on either side. But the one in the middle is uh, on uh, to the left side is one that Bill particularly had something to do with. He had something to do with both of them. And the mobility arms, being able to make those joints, was something very important. And the one on the left has a crank on it. And the, uh, you actually cranked yourself up in a chair to raise your head up to look out the window. The window. Look out the helmet. The window in the helmet. All right. Because if you notice the Gemini spacecraft, when they sit down, you don't see their, their mouth. You just see their uh, the Gemini spacesuits when the astronauts are sitting down. You hardly ever see their mouth. You see their nose. Because the, the neck wasn't mobile. Everything was straight ahead, just like the Mercury suits were and there wasn't that kind of mobility in the waist and so forth so when they sat down you literally went down in the spacesuit of course a spacesuit is a spaceship all of its own you're actually kind of floating around in it it's not like putting on uh long johns and and long shirt and so forth is clinging to your body you're you have that on you but you're kind of moving around in this thing a little bit and uh but these are two of the spacesuits that Bill helped design. There he is with Gary Harris. Hello, Gary. Uh, Gary Harris has a company called De Leon Industries, and he's the principal designer for spacesuits over the, the decades. Bill also is involved with the, I think it's the, the, the North Dakota uh, University uh, that is one of the institutions that's experts in spacesuits. And there is Bill, uh, Bill, there is um, Gary Harris with one of the Artemis style spacesuits that he built that is on display here at the American Space Museum. Thank you for loaning that to us, Gary Harris. Uh, Gary's built about nine or ten spacesuits. Now he's starting to make them 
in, in miniature form, about a foot tall, and sells them. A uh, very crafty gentleman with this. The difference between this suit and the suits that they're using on the ISS right now is this has a back hatch on it that you jump into it instead of the upper torso and lower torso that connect at the waist. And that was something that the Russians have done for years in their Orlon space suit. So, um, Marty, how, who's watching us today? Give us a shout out there to who's staying curious. Yeah, Mark and, uh, and uh, Tom Yusiak, and Steve Hammer, Carlton Bailey, and Christopher Mick. Thank you guys for staying curious. And the Yusiak brothers, glad you're uh, watching from Pennsylvania. And we're going to have Carlton Bailey with us tomorrow and give us a day in the life of a launch photographer. And Carlton Bailey ought to know he's, he's covered about 700 launches. And uh, we thought it'd be good to have him come on and talk a little bit about the Artemis launch, uh, hauling your equipment out there and then watching hurricanes go by and storms and so forth. And then uh, having to go back out there and retrieve things. And Carlton will have some great stories. CB, we can't wait to get you in the house tomorrow. Yes, Marty, you were going to say something. No, I wasn't. Well, oh. actually, Larry Puskar just said hello. Hello, Larry. Good to see you up there. And, and uh, we are enjoying a beautiful day here in, in Florida, so I don't want to rub it in as winter is setting in. December 1st is here. It's still autumn, though. D uh, we've got three more weeks of, of autumn until December sets in a couple days before Christmas on December 22nd. So talking about Mr. Bill Elkins here and, 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 and all that he's done, uh, uh, in the spacesuit industry, and he lived the ripe old age of in his 90s. Um, uh, I wanted to in some way honor him, and, and this is a way to honor him, is this spacewalk going on behind me in 1985, okay, 30, uh, 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 85 is what, Marty? That's almost 40 years ago. 37. Yeah, 37 years ago. Um, this is Jerry Ross on STS-61B that was in orbit on this date in history. Let me consult my shuttle scroll here. 61B was launched November 26th, and it stayed in space. Atlantis did till December 3rd. And this is Jerry Ross uh, doing... Uh, testing building techniques for the International Space Station. They actually thought, Marty, that they were going to construct things like this. And they, after this mission and a couple others trying to do it, it was too hard and they decided to send up equipment already uh, prefab. Uh, they didn't do much of this sort of putting uh, sticks together. We used tinker toys. We used to play with those. And it was kind of a tinker toy type of situation that they abandoned because tests like this on 61B in 1985 showed to be a little bit too hard to do. And then in 19, in 2000, um, uh, I'm trying to think of when this mission was. We have another. So that's the spacewalk going on behind me there. All right. And then there it is again. And this is our good friend John Harrington on STS-113 uh, uh, is when John went to space in uh, November 20, uh, 2002. And it, it was Endeavor uh, that was launched uh, on STS-97 today in space history in 2000. So two years later, Endeavor was also in space. And here's our friend uh, John Harrington doing a spacewalk. Uh, and we had a nice conversation with Mr. Harrington, uh, the only Native American to go to space is a Chickasaw Indian. And you can catch that on our YouTube channel of Stay Curious Podcasts that you can see uh, all of them there. Not all of them, uh, all of them, uh, but uh, over 200 of them are on Facebook there. Or on, on, over 200 of them are on our YouTube channel, and the rest of them are on our Facebook Live on there. So there's Mr. Harrington on a spacewalk in this evolution of the spacesuit. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Bill Elkins, for that. So, you know, Marty, we are serious about celebrating space workers. 
uh, and, and always have been, and everybody that knows me knows that I'm a big fanatic about uh, our Space View Park and how it is like a Taj Mahal or a Roman Coliseum. There's over 30 astronaut handprints in bronze there. Uh, most of the, uh, the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo astronauts are there. Those that aren't had died before we started harvesting these handprints in, in 1999. But people like Marty Winkle and Mr. Bill Elkins gave this museum $100 to put your name up on up in light, so to speak. And there is Mr. Elkins uh, and the companies there that he worked for, Litton, uh, Garrett, uh, and uh, Air, Air Research there. And uh, Litton Industries. Litton Industries was the pioneer of the spacesuit in there. And there's Bill and that is Neil Armstrong's handprints in the left. And you see in the back, John F. Kennedy delivering the famous speech there at our beautiful Space View Park and our Apollo Monument there. So, And Steve didn't want to leave you out honoring your, your, your wonderful father. And there is Steve uh, Elkin's name up there, Ames NASA up there uh, near his father's. And how cool is that, Marty? A father's son... Uh, in our Space View Park there, being honored uh, for what they did to put America on the moon and then build the International Space Station. So. Macaulay there too. Is, my, is Macaulay's in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see so Mike, Mike in the upper hand. hand. Uh, he's got NASA USA there. He was an astronaut. Uh, Larry Carr, uh, Ed Oster. I don't know any of those names there. Once in a while I do. Every time I go out there, I know where Marty's is now. Uh, and it's lovely just to see people's names out there. And you can still send us $100 and we'll put you on the Apollo. We have room for the Apollo workers out there. We don't have any more room for the shuttle monuments out there. Maybe we can raise uh, money. These these pylons cost uh, about $10,000 each. All right. So it's no small investment out there. But uh, we still do take in apollo workers and uh about uh, three or four times a year we put the new ones out there so marty thank you very much there for mentioning that about mccully can you think of anything i don't think you met mr bill uh elkins when he was in the building you didn't did you that was uh, three or four years ago but uh, uh really a great guy uh and, and truly another national treasure gone and thank you, Steve, for letting us know about your father. And Steve, you're welcome at our museum anytime. Can't wait to see you again. I know you live in California, but get over here on this coast, and we'd love to get you on Stay Curious and talk about your career as well as your fabulous father. Well, we have a happy birthday to do, Marty, today. And uh, 55 years old, double nickel is this guy. Terry Virts, Jr., born December 1st, 1967 in Baltimore, Maryland, but he considers Columbia, Maryland to be his hometown. He's an Air Force colonel and also a Star Trek fan. You're going to see here in a minute. Virts spent 213 days in space. He did three spacewalks on two space missions, STS-130, and then he was on Expedition 4243. Of course, he rode a Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, to orbit for his long duration mission. And he was the commander of STS-43. Virts uh, was a pilot of STS-130. They took up Node 3 as well as the cupola. So he took up the cupola that his pictures in there. And uh, had the shuttle era, of course, continued, he would have been a commander of a space shuttle eventually. But instead, his second flight was on a Soyuz rocket. Carrying him, uh, Samantha Cristoforetti, an ESA astronaut, and a Russian uh, to the space station. And that was um, in 2014. Well, he was on the space station when Leonard Nimoy, who played, of course, Spock on, there's, there's his book there. Uh, of course, when Leonard Nimoy died, Terry Virts was on the International Space Station as the commander and uh, he honored the actor with his famous role of playing, of course, Spock with the Vulcan hand sign on there. His Vulcan 
Kohanim inspired salute improvised by the late actor when he was asked to portray an alien life form uh, to say live long and prosper and actually he did this Terry Virch did and flying over in the background is Boston and that is the city of Leonard Nimoy's birth so how cool is that that astronauts will do things like that okay well, Terry is a virtual speaker around the world. He's an author, a filmmaker, and uh, uh, he's got his own website, terryverts.com. Uh, and he is, um, he's also one of eight, he, he was part of a crew of eight aviation explorers that did the fastest circumnavigation of the Earth, all right? Uh, they went over both geographic poles by airplane in 46 hours and 40 minutes acknowledged by the Guinness Book of World Records. So quite a guy there. And I'm sure William Whiting agrees to that. William, good to see you. And oh my gosh, Daniel DeYoung says he's at the Cosmosphere, Marty. Are we ever jealous? Uh, Daniel, I hope it's cold and, and freezing. <laughs> not, not really there in uh, uh, Kansas, uh, Hutchinson, Kansas. All right. And uh, you must be on a little vacation. So if you are, from Hutchinson, Kansas, you just about an hour and a half away is Dwight D. Eisenhower Presidential uh, Home and Library and a fabulous center up there. So hope you're enjoying the, uh, what do they got there? They got the, the SR-71 space planes there that you can touch the nose of it. Uh, they've got uh, Apollo 13 command modules there, Odyssey. And what I really like uh, there, Daniel DeYoung, is the um, Soyuz Voskhod uh, tunnel that Leonov uh, uh, tra tra change, uh, tra uh, trained with on the famous Russian spacewalk. So, Marianne Krutz, glad that you're watching Stay Curious today, too. So, uh Marty, we, we wish Terry Virts a happy birthday. Double nickel. He'll certainly be around. Hope that Nick Enix wrangles him out there. I'd love to hear him give a talk out there at the Space Station. We want to remember that we have 11, no, we have 13 human beings in space. This is the Chinese Heavenly Palace, Tangong Space Station, with six humans on it, five men and a woman. The three of those in the back are going to be coming down in the next day or two. And then on our International Space Station, 22 years continuously occupied, we have seven uh, astronauts, three Americans, three Russians, and ESA, uh, or uh, JAXA astronaut, uh, Koichi. Uh, so we hope everybody gets a chance to look at them. You can, if you're looking up in the night sky, you go out and look at the night sky tonight. You know I'm going to tell you, you're going to see three planets out there. Saturn. Jupiter is the brightest star in the sky, almost directly overhead, and rising in the east is the red star Mars, and it's going to keep getting brighter. Mars is 50 million miles away today, and in just two weeks, it's going to be 38 million miles away, making its closest approach to Earth in two years. And like I said, only three months out of every two years can we see the surface of Mars. I was looking at it last night, friends, and I hope that you can find a astronomy club somewhere so you can go out and see these holiday lights in the sky marty you know i'm going to be doing it so i have to get you looking at mars here in the next week or two so you can get on our their UCAC uh, microphone there and tell everybody how cool it is so anything else we need to talk about marty on our another program nope looks like we're all caught up all right well thank you for a great job and we thank everybody out there for enjoying Stay Curious. Uh, God bless uh, the family of Bill Elkins. Uh, Steve, thank you for sharing that about your father. He is truly a space pioneer, uh, unrivaled by any others with the spacesuits out there. And we're glad that we could honor him today on Stay Curious. So come back tomorrow. We are going to have a character, if you've never met him before, uh, just like me, right, Marty? You never know what's going to come out of our mouths. So I'm going to get Carlton Bailey in the house, and he's going to talk about a day in a life of over 700 rocket launches he's been involved in in his 30-some-year career as a rocket freelancer. So come back tomorrow, and don't miss Carlton Bailey talking about rocket launches with me, Mark Marquette, as we bridge the space between us.